What do you mean by a state transition matrix? Well, my name is Rishi Ramjul and welcome to the Backwards Jury community where I make it very easy for you. So, let us ask yourself an obvious question. What do I actually mean by the term state transition matrix? Well, what's one out? So, state transition matrix. So, a state transition matrix is simply just a particular matrix that satisfies a linear homogeneous state equation. So, this is a matrix that satisfies the linear homogeneous state equation. So, now the question arrives is, what do you actually mean by a linear homogeneous state equation? This is very simple. So, a linear homogeneous state equation is nothing but a particular state equation given by x dash of t is equal to a into x of t. So, in the case of a dynamic state equation, we also had something called b into u of t over here. But in the case of a linear homogeneous state equation, this particular term is absent. This is simply what you refer to as a linear homogeneous state equation. So, a particular matrix that satisfies this particular linear homogeneous state equation is simply what you refer to as a state transition matrix. So, let us take a particular matrix say phi of t as the state transition matrix. Let phi of t be the state transition matrix. Then if phi of t is the state transition matrix, then this phi of t must satisfy this particular equation. That is, substituting this over here, we must get phi dash of t is equal to a into phi of t. Let this be taken as equation number 2. And now, if the initial condition, that is when time t is equal to 0, when time t is equal to 0, then let the initial condition be say x of 0. So then, in such kind of a case, x of t would be given as x of t is equal to the state transition matrix phi of t into this particular initial condition which is x of 0. Let this be taken as equation number 3. So now, let us now derive the value of this particular state transition matrix. So, for that, let us take the Laplace transform of equation number 1. So, taking the Laplace transform of equation number 1. So, upon taking the Laplace transform of this particular equation, we would get, say, Laplace transform of x dash of t is given as s into x of s minus x of 0. So this is equal to the Laplace transform of a into x of t is nothing but a into x of s. So let us take this x of s here and take x of 0 over here. So we would get s into x of s minus a into x of s is equal to x of 0. Here x of s is common. So we can take x of s multiplied by here because it is s all these are in terms of matrices so we can't simply just write s but rather we have to write s into i where i is the identity matrix 0 1 0 0 1 so s into i is simply but s 0 0 s so we have to write s into i over here so therefore this would become s i minus a so this is equal to x of 0 so now here from this x of s is equal to nothing but si minus a the whole inverse multiplied by x of 0. Now in order to get it in this particular form we have to take the inverse Laplace transform of this. So taking the inverse Laplace transform we would get the inverse Laplace transform of x of s is nothing but x of t. So x of t is equal to the inverse Laplace transform of si minus a the whole inverse multiplied by x of 0. So therefore upon comparing this with this particular equation number 3 we would get the fact that the straight transition matrix phi of t is equal to the inverse Laplace transform of s i minus a the whole inverse. So this does is simply the expression for the state transition matrix. As simple as that guys, there's nothing more to it. So this does is simply how you derive the expression for the state transition matrix. So this particular state transition matrix has got certain properties. So what are those properties? Let's dig into what the properties of a state transition matrix are. 
So the first property of a state transition matrix is that the state transition matrix phi of zero is nothing but the identity matrix I. Now the second property is that the inverse of a state transition matrix is nothing but phi of minus t. Now the third property is that the state transition matrix raised to a particular power k is nothing but the state transition matrix phi of kt. Now another thing is that if you have say phi of t2 minus t1 minus phi of t1 minus t0 then this is nothing but the state transition matrix phi of t2 minus t0. This is the fourth property of a state transition matrix. So these are the basic properties of a state transition matrix. So in the upcoming videos, we'll be discussing certain problems, numerical problems based on these state transition matrices. So this does is simply how you derive the equation and the basic properties of a particular state transition matrix. As simple as that guys, there's nothing more to it. So I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of what you refer to as a state transition matrix. And if you guys found this video informative, please do hit the like button and join this community by hitting that subscribe button. We'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.